What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create interactive professional visualizations for modern web browsers using Bokeh in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so Bokeh is a Python library that allows us to build interactive and professional visualizations or graphs on the web. So this is more web focused. It's not like Matplotlib where we get a graphical user interface to interact with. We get a website, an HTML document if you want, and we get the visualization embedded into it. So this is JavaScript powered. However, we don't have to write a single line of JavaScript code. We can stay in Python, maybe add a little bit of HTML but the result is going to be JavaScript powered and it's focused on the web. So this is a library that is very good for building complex dashboards. So for example, a financial dashboard for your stock analysis application, this might be a use case for Bokeh. And in this video today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction into the library. We're going to talk about some basic stuff like how to create line charts, scatter plots, bar plots and stuff like that. And then we're going to go more into customization and making the graphs interactive. So having elements that we can interact with to change the graph, this is what we're going to talk about today. So this is a little bit like a crash course into Bokeh. And for that, we're going to start by installing the module, we're going to open up the command line, we're going to say pip install Bokeh. And in addition to that, in this video, I'm also going to use NumPy just to generate some random data. You can also do it without NumPy, but NumPy is a library that you probably already have installed anyway. So pip install NumPy if you don't have it. And once these two libraries are installed, we can go into our Python script, and we can say import NumPy as NP. And then for the beginning, we're going to just import from Bokeh, the basic figure and the show function. So show basically shows the figure and figure creates the figure. And then we can use the figure to call different functions like the line function, the circle function to uh, create a different plot type. So we're going to say here from Bokeh, <coughs> Sorry about that from bokeh.plotting, we're going to import figure and then show. And then we're going to say, for example, uh, let's generate some basic data for a line chart, we're going to say x equals NPA range, we're going to generate values from zero to 10 with a step size of one. And then we're going to just define some basic functions. So y one is going to be x squared. And then we're going to copy this y two and y three is going to be x to the power of three and x to the power of four. And then we can create a simple figure, we're going to say p equals figure. Um, and then the title of the figure is going to be simple line charts. And then we're going to say the x axis label is going to be x the y axis label is going to be y. And uh, then we can just use this p object now to do the actual plotting. So we can say p dot line, we provide the x value, the y value, and then the legend. Uh, this is basically what, uh, what the label in the legend is for this particular line. And in this case, it's going to be quadratic function. And we're going to say that the line width is going to be line underscore width is going to be two and the color is going to be a red. And now we can copy this, we can exchange this for y two y three, we're going to say cubic function, and quartic function, this is a fancy word for a function, which is to the power of four. Um, and then we're going to change the colors to green and to blue. And all we need to do now to show this is we need to say show p. And then I can run this. And this results in a browser opening the HTML file main.html. And you can see now we have this graph here with the different functions, we have the quadratic, the cubic, the quartic function, we can also move this around. If I click on this here, I can move it around, I can also enable scroll zoom. Um, and you can see this is a very simple visualization. So there's nothing fancy about this. This is quite simple. But we're going to go further, of course, in this video. So this is how you plot a simple line chart. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to plot a simple scatter plot. So for the scatter plot, all we need to do is we need to use a different function, we're going to keep the figure, we're going to change the title to simple scatter, and then plot. And the data is not going to be functions, it's going to be random points. So np dot random 50 instances, we're going to multiply this by 10, just to get different scales here. 
and y is going to be np random times, I don't know, 200 so that we have different values. So np random dot random actually. So random is just a sub module and random dot random is the function. So this generates 50 values between um, zero and one and then it multiplies it by 10. So between zero and 10 and here between zero and 200. Um, and then what we can do here is we can say p dot circle x y legend underscore label is going to be random points or something whatever you want to call this and the color of the points is going to be yellow. And then we can also add that the size is going to be 12. So that is that this will also just produce a simple plot, it always opens it up on my second screen. There you go. So we have these simple random points here. Again, I can zoom out and move this around. So this is how you build or this is how you plot a simple scatter plot. Um, and then maybe the last of the types that I want to show you here, I want to go more into customization and making things interactive. But uh, another thing that we can do is we can also plot a bar plot for this, we're going to say that x equals np arrange again, so a range from zero to five, with a step size of one. So those are the categories, and then we're going to generate random values, uh, normally distributed. I think rand n is normal distribution, right? Uh, or actually, we're not going to do this normally distributed, let's just go with random five and then times, I don't know, 100 or something. And then this is a simple bar plot. And then this is uh, going to be a different function. So we're not going to use circle circle is a scatter plot function, we're going to use v bar vertical bar. And we're going to say x equals x top equals y, the width is going to be 0 0.5. And the bottom is going to be zero. And then the color of the individual bars is going to be red. This is how you do a simple bar plot. And this is what it looks like is the result, of course, we can again, zoom out, move around. Um, that's basically it. So this is those are the basic types. Now we can go more into um, customization. And one basic thing that I want to show you here, maybe we can go back to the scatter plot for this, um, we can change attributes of the plot after the plot was created. So here now, we can not only specify the things like color or size inside of the circle function, we can also do it afterwards. Um, by saying that this here is also an object, we're going to call the circle. Um, and we can get the glyph of the circle. So I can say glyph equals circle dot glyph. And then I can say glyph dot size, and I can change this to 200. For example, I'm not sure if this is going to work This is an extreme value. And I can say glyph dot fill color is going to be um, equal to red. This is now going to look terrible, obviously, but you can see we can change these things also after uh, we, we create the instances. So you can see now that this changed the appearance because we got this glyph object here. And we changed the size and the fill color. So this is something that is important, because this is also how we connect these values to certain uh, widgets that are going to make our plots interactive. Um, but before we go into that, I want to show you two more things. First of all, I want to show you how we can change the theme. So right now, let's maybe change this to 20 here. So right now we have the default theme, but we can also set a simple theme by just importing here another, uh, I think this is a function cur doc for current document. And we can just say cur doc dot theme, and we can set it to dark minimal, for example. And then we can do some stuff, for example, also like taking uh, the figure and setting the width to something. So the width to 1280, the height to 720. So HD, and I can run this now. And this basically creates this graph. So we have still the styling from before we have now a dark theme, and we have a larger uh, plot because of the width and the height that we provided here. So that's quite simple. And then before we go into the interactive plots, I want to also show you how we can use um, how we can use or actually two more things. Sorry, I forgot one thing I want to also show you how to use multiple plots. So how to create multiple plots in a row, um, in the same visualization, and then I'm going to talk about how to use external data sources. And then we're going to talk about making graphs interactive. So let's um, 
now do something else. Let's say we have the x values, they're always going to be the same and p dot arrange. We're going to arrange this from zero to six with a step size of 0.1. So this is going to be the input for the functions. Again, we're going to say uh, y one equals and here we're going to say now this is the sine function, for example, then we have the cosine and the 10 function. Um, and then we can plot all of those side by side. So we can say p one equals figure and we don't have to specify all these parameters. So just figure p one line. Uh, and then we can say x y one and we can copy this now we can do it three times just change the ones to the two to a two um, and then here to three. And now in order to display all these plots side by side, we need to create a layout and we need to um, we need to create a row layout and we need to add those to the row. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say from bokeh dot layouts, we're going to import row, and then we're going to use a row in order to display them in a row, obviously. So we're going to not say show p, we're going to say show a row where the children of the row are equal to p1, p2, p3, and the sizing mode is going to be scale width so that we have everything fitted into the screen. And this looks now like that. So you can see that all of the three plots are visible in the screen. So this is why we did the scaling. Um, and we have these plots now side by side, and they are separate graphs. So I can oh, not save this, I can uh, move this around and the other ones are not moved around. Right, so that's that. Um, and then I want to also show you before we get last but not least before we get into the interactive stuff, I want to show you how we can um, use bokeh or how we can we can combine bokeh with um, external data. And for this, I'm going to use the pandas data reader. So maybe another module that you need to install. Uh, let me just get rid of all this here. And also of this year, uh, we're going to open up the command line if you want to follow along with that pip install pandas dash data reader, this is just going to allow us to download stock data from the Yahoo Finance API. Alternatively, you can also just provide a CSV file and load it with pandas for this, of course, you will need pip install pandas. So install these modules if you want to follow along or just get your own data frame in some way. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to say here, import pandas data reader as web, we're going to download from the Yahoo Finance API, the stock uh, ticker Apple. So AAPL from Yahoo, we're going to load this into a data frame. And we're going to say now that our source is going to be and for this, we need to import from bokeh dot models import column data source. So we're going to build a column data source where the data of this is equal to df. So we pass a pandas data frame into this constructor to get a source. And then all we need to do is we need to say p equals figure. And then we say plot a line. So p dot line, where x is the date, y is the close price and the source that we're talking about is the source. So we download a data frame from the Yahoo Finance API for the Apple stock price, where we have open, high, low, close, adjusted, close volume, and also the date, we take this, we turn this into a column data source, we feed this into the line function. And then we show the graph P and this will display stock data to us. Um, in the web browser, as you can see, this is the Apple stock price here, uh, visualized with bokeh. So this also works easily. Um, and that's it for the static graph. So up until now, we didn't really interact with the graphs other than moving them around. Now we're going to add specific elements to um, interact with the graphs to so change the behavior of the graphs interactively. And for that, we're going to just do it again, we're going to say x equals np random random, we're going to generate 50 random values, we're going to do the same for y and we're going to just say p equals figure. And we're going to um, just say that the points we want to plot here are going to be p circle. So we're just going to do a simple scatter plots, uh, scatter plot of x and y. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add HTML elements. So up until this point, this is what we already did, we just define, or we just generate values, we define a figure, we plot a scatter plot, and we save the object into the points. 
And now we're going to say we want to have a new diff box in HTML. And for that, we need to import from bokeh.models. Um, we're going to import diff, we're going to import spinner, and we're going to import text input. We can remove this here. And we can also remove this here. And we're going to say that this is a diff box with the following text, the text is going to be a p tag, a paragraph, select size, we're going to close it off again. And then we're going to say that we want to add a spinner, this is just something that we can click to select uh, numerical values from. So we're going to say this is going to be a spinner that has the title circle size, the lowest value is going to be zero, the highest value is going to be 20, the step size is going to be one. And the value is going to be whatever the value of the points sizes. So points dot glyph, remember, we have the glyph object, we're going to get the size of this, and this is going to be the value, the default value of the spinner, we're going to set the width of the spinner to 200. And then we're going to just say spinner dot js link, we're going to link the value of the spinner to the value of the point size, by saying the value of the spinner is going to be linked to points dot glyph, and from the glyph, we want to get the size. So this line here links the size of the points to the value of the spinner. And then we're also going to do text input um, It's going to be a text input and the value of the text input is going to be points glyph fill color. So this is going to be a hex code and the width here is also going to be 200. And we're going to link the content of this text input by using JS link to the points glyph and then to fill color. So this basically means that the color of the points will be displayed in a text input. And when we change the content of the text input, we're going to change the color of the individual points. And now we're going to say layout and for that we need to import from bokeh layouts, we're going to import layout, we're going to say here, layout equals, and we're going to define one by having a list and inside of that list, we're going to have another list with diff and spinner. Then we're going to have text input. And then we're going to have the paragraph P. Uh, not the paragraph P sorry, uh, the the figure itself, the visualization. Um, and then we're going to just show this whole layout. So this is a very, very basic interactive graph. But it's already quite interesting, because now we have the scatter plot here, I can increase the circle size, you can see it happens dynamically, I cannot go beyond uh, beyond 20. But I can also, if I have a certain size 15, for example, I can also change here ff 0000, enter, and then they become red, or I can say ff 6600, there you go orange. So we can actually dynamically change the graph how it looks by just clicking on elements by just changing values of elements. And this can be made way more um, interactive. So we can add way more elements here, we can make a professional financial dashboards uh, dashboard provide the source from a uh, selection, we can uh, provide a stock ticker manually with a text input, we can change design using spinners and sliders and all that. This library allows you to build professional and modern looking interactive web visualizations. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.